what's going on Rise fam? Happy Sunday. I'm super excited you tuned into another virtual weekend experience here at Rise Church. This is Pastor A. And listen, uh, if you were with us yesterday for bowling, uh, I kind of get a little bit competitive and I get excited, right? And uh, I just want to say we had a great time and uh, I hope you had a great time as well. Listen, uh, we missed you guys. If you weren't able to make it, just know you were missed, but we have great and exciting news to come in the future. I just want to give us one quick update real quick, and that is around Mission Vision 2022. God continues to open up doors for renovation. So we keep taking steps forward and God keeps bringing that total project cost down. So continue to pray for us in that and keep giving. I just want to say thank you so much for all that you're doing to make an impact. Listen, I hope you had an amazing week. I hope it's been everything you've wanted plus some. But listen, uh, I am super excited for what God has in store for the future for you, for Rise Church, and for the city of Romulus. Now, one thing I want to note here is uh, we're going to go into a worship video just in a second. But after, outside, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, outside of that, uh, listen, we had some technical difficulties this week. So we are re-airing last week's message uh, and then we will uh, go forward in our sowing and reaping season on the talents as we go further and that will be displayed next week. So listen, I want you to get caught up. If you have not listened to the message from last week, I want you to go ahead and get caught up. But listen, keep praying, keep believing, keep declaring. I must say, Things are not always the way that we have them planned. But listen, sometimes God makes us wait, but while we wait, God refines our character. He develops us. He makes us, uh, fur takes us further and uh, basically gets us to the end road of becoming who he's calling us to be in this process. So listen, uh, right now, while we're in the season of sowing and reaping, we also have to wait well. So let's keep our faith up. Let's keep believing. Let's keep declaring. But then also let's keep sowing. And, and uh, we believe that as we sow, God is going to send an increase in that, in that harvest. So listen, I just want to encourage you this week, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what's going on in your own personal life, keep believing, keep declaring, keep standing in faith. God is going to do amazing things in your life. So listen, uh, we're about to get into some worship and then we'll begin the replay from next, uh, last week's experience on sowing and reaping season. All right, are you guys ready? Let's rise.
right, so this week we're going to take a look at a particular text, Matthew 25, verse 14 out of the New King James Version. This is what it says. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a faraway country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ability. And then immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them. And made another five talents. So you've got one that's kind of like business or savvy minded, right? He's taking what he received and he's going ahead and multiplying it, right? And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents. So you see, he already doubled it. And this is what he says. He says this, Lord, you delivered to me five talents, but look, I have gained five more talents besides them. Okay, so the expectation was that they were supposed to grow these talents. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Okay. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, look, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. So we got two guys that are doubling uh, the increase of the talent. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, here we go. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. So you know what happened, right? Like this is, let me, let me tell you what happened real quick, right? So uh, I went and hid your talent in the ground and look, uh, here it is, right? I'm gonna just dig it up and the one talent you gave me uh, is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you're wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So here's an idea. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, right? You could have put this in a savings account, a CD or something. And at my coming, I would have received back my own, at least with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents for those for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Okay, so listen, uh, this is an absolute mouthful. We do not have time to go through this entire text today. But maybe there'll be a part two to this next Sunday. But um, before we jump into the actual story, let me tell you what this text makes me think about. This makes me think about the time of Christmas and the time of giving gifts. And I'm just going to ask you a question and don't worry. It's just me. You can keep it real. It's only me, you and your couch cushion, right? Have you ever received a gift and you looked at it like, what am I going to do with this, right? <laughs> Have you ever received something crazy for Christmas and was like, this is a perfect gift? for me to re-gift to somebody else. Uh-oh, I, I must be talking to myself, right? Okay, uh, so listen, uh, I see that you're not commenting on the live chat, but uh, let's not act like I'm the only person who has received something, right? Uh, that, that necessarily didn't fit what I'd expected, right? Uh, let me tell you, you received some gifts and you were like, I will never use this, but you try to look happy in the moment and you're like, uh, gee, thanks, I, I really appreciate this, but in the back of your mind you already know that's going to sit in the same gift bag they gave to you just so you can repurpose it and give it to somebody else right well let me take that a little bit further okay have you ever had what I'm gonna call gifting disappointment like you see somebody else get the thing that they really wanted when it was their time to open their gift right um, back in the day you used to open all your gifts in front of everybody at one time at least that's how it was in my household and so when you opened up their gift when they opened up their gift it was like 
bam, they got what they wanted. So I just know I'm going to get exactly what I want only for it to be your turn. And now you're disappointed. Pastor A, that's never happened to me. Nope, you need to get delivered because you're lying, right? Now, even though you didn't value that gift, it doesn't mean that just because you didn't value it, that it wasn't valuable. It just means that you didn't want it. Uh-oh, I'm about to go somewhere, ready? To the person that has given the gift, that gift had value. They took the time, well, most people take the time out, but not everybody. But they took the time, uh, they thought of it, uh, they saw you with it, they, they saw you having it, they, they, they planned the way your face was going to be when you opened it, and using the gift that they gave you, but because you felt that it was not what you wanted, you didn't value the gift the way that it was. Uh oh, I feel like preaching already. It's like when you go shopping, right, for your kids. I remember back in the day when our kids were really, really, really little, when they were small, right? You put all this time into shopping, seeing their faces light up. Uh, you go get them a gift, you wrap it all nicely. And then when it's Christmas Day, they unwrap it only to play with the box instead of the actual gift because they didn't understand the value of the gift. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So to them, the box. The packaging and the gift are of the same value, right? Well, in our text today, Jesus is dealing with people with talents, gifts, and abilities. And in this specific parable, it's about money, but I want us honestly to go a little bit further than just the topic or context of money because I believe that spiritually, this is the state that the church finds itself in right now. And I'm not just talking about Rise Church. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ as a whole. And so I want to give us today a couple points, but let me start off first with point number one. Here's point number one. Ready? Ready to say it, tweet it, live chat it, whatever. God expects us to use the talents he has given us. God expects us to use the talents he's given us. This is not a re-gift, okay? God has given you a unique ability and he expects you to use it. Just like in this parable, he gave talent allotments to his servants for a reason. Now, do you know that God has designed you for a unique purpose? He's gifted you with unique attributes for a reason, even your quirks, even the things that seem a little bit extreme, right? He de just didn't throw random things together of randomness and put them all together in a person and then create you. No, he designed you with unique abilities and talents. And because he took his time with you, he expects you to use those things that he designed in you for him, right? So he put things in you for you to give it back to him better than the way that he gave it. Now, this is what's interesting in this text. In this text, and this is the reflective thought I really want to share with us this week at Rise Church. I want this to stick in your head this week. God gave the talents to the servants, won five talents, won two talents, and to the third servant, he had one talent. Now, I got to ask you a question because uh, I think many of us feel like this right now, like the servant with the one talent. How many of you right now feel like the person with only one gifting, insignificant. Like I only have one talent, Pastor A. It's not that special. I'm really not that great. How many of you right now feel like what you have is, been, is not enough? Like what God is giving you is not enough. Like it's not that special. And let me tell you, this is how the enemy comes in. This is where he wants to work in your life. The temptation that comes in happens when you compare yourself to the one that has five or two talents. Okay, what's interesting in this parable is the fact that we understand that the, the master gave the talents in order, but he called all the servants together to him at one place and one time. So the one that had five talents was also present when he gave the one two talents, and he was also present when he gave the person one talent. But also the opposite. So was the person that received the one talent. He got to see the other two people receive the five talents. He got to see another person receive two talents. And then it made him feel insignificant. This is where the enemy really wants to creep into our lives. This is so much like real life because at any given time, you can look at people and see what they are doing and see how they're using their gifts. And you can always compare. 
You can always see the gifting that's when it's at work or on display. And I'm wondering how many of us see people that seem to be more anointed, more gifted, more talented, and then we have a tendency to feel not needed because that one person is more talented, that one person is more gifted, that more that one person is more special than we are. Sometimes we go down this rabbit hole. We start thinking things like God loves them better than me because look, look at all the blessings that they have. Look at their giftings and abilities. Look at what they, where they live. Look at what they drive. Look how happy their marriage is. And we tend to compare these things because we're seeing somebody else operate in their gift. And we think that God has associated blessings better with them than ourselves because we get caught in this comparison trap. We look at what somebody else received and our tendency is to think that God didn't give us what we have for equal reasons. It's easy to look over the fence and want to bury our gifts or think that God is not using us. Well, today I got to tell you that today we have to break up with the feelings of insignificance. We have to break up with the feelings of being inferior, the feeling of being less than, the feeling of being not enough. We have to break up with these things because you don't know exactly how many talents God has given them. All you see is their talents on display. See, God is using you to do something for him. Uh, He's using you as a gifted individual individual and you don't even know that that person that you think were given five talents might just be using that one talent really well. Oh, I feel like preaching, right? And so here's another point. Just like our finances, God expects a return on his investment. God is giving you the talent, the gift, the ability to use it for his glory. You don't know how your talent will manifest until you really use it for its God-given intended purposes, right? Sometimes we think because somebody's on display that they've got five talents. They could just be using one talent very well. You know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, in business, I I hear it like this, right? Sometimes uh, you can get five talents, but those five talents are not as effective because you have to manage each one of them individually, right? And sometimes it's easier to give you laser focus on one task or assignment to do the best thing for that one talent, that one gift, that one assignment to bring the best or the most out of it, right? Uh, I work in a, I used to work uh, as an area manager and we used to have something called metrics or different buckets, different quotas to hit, right? And at one point we had eight different things that we were responsible for managing. And can I tell you, oftentimes as I was managing those things through store managers, through employees, through people on the front line, through Salesforce and staff, what happened is they would shift focus because we were behind on a certain sales number. Uh, They would shift focus on that uh, thing and something else goes suffering as a result of it. So if we're going to focus our sales on the things that lacking. Now I'm focusing so much over here. I forget to do the other things well, right? And I want to tell you sometimes when uh, others have uh, a gift or talent that looks like it's greater than yours, may you don't know what it takes for them to manage all the things that come along with it. And instead of thinking that your one talent is less than maybe God has gifted you with the blessing of having laser focus. So that way you can do that one thing thing well. So I want to tell you today to stop comparing, stop analyzing, stop looking over your shoulder, say, I only have this one thing. Because Can I tell you the one thing that God has gifted you with is still needed for the body. It's still purpose in your design. And you're going to do the thing that God's called you to do when you develop that laser focus, where you're not distracted by anything else going on in your life. I want some people today in the Rise family to say, I'm going to invest my talent, whether if I, it's big, whether it's small, whether it's much, whether it's little. I'm going to do the thing that God has called me to do to the best of my ability and then trust God through the process for me to make that investment, to give it back to him better than what he gave to me in the first place. I feel like preaching. Can you say amen? God has gifted you as an individual. And here's my final point here. Just like our finances, God expects a return on his investment. 
God has given you the talent, the gift, the ability to use it for his glory, not your own. And so this week, this is what I want you to do. I want you to examine who you are this week through journaling, writing, diarying, something. Even if you have to write it down, write down the things that make you uniquely you. And if you can't come up with the things that make you uniquely you all by yourself, bring in someone else, bring in a spouse, bring in a friend, bring somebody in to help you write these things of what make you uniquely you. And then I want you to ask yourself, with the talent that I've been given, with my uniqueness, with my individuality, how can I use uniquely me for God's glory? How can I use uniquely me for God's glory? That's a good place to stop. I told you we weren't going to have enough time to get through everything else. There's so many other things that I could talk to to, to uh to speak to about this uh, particular text and topic, but this is a good place for us to start because I want us to begin to live a life of obedience and faith, and we've got to start producing fruit. We've got to start yielding increase. We've got to start giving things back to God better because it's not enough for us to join in on a Sunday experience and saying, I got my God time off, check the box. No, God is expecting us to give him the best with the fruit and with the investment and with the gifts that he's given us. Can we pray? Father, thank you so much for your amazing love, your amazing giftings toward us, the abilities, the uniqueness that we've been given. Lord, would you allow us to give these things back to you better than what it is when you gave it to us? Lord, you expect us to give you a return, so help us to be people of that of, and of that purpose today. So Father, I ask you, I bless your name. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, it is a great day to have a great day. It's an even better day to place your faith in Jesus. So listen, if you are here and you're watching us for the first time and you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, let me tell you, uh, that is the best decision that you could ever make. And I want to help you take your next steps with Jesus. So if you could, go ahead and click uh, or type in the live chat the word Jesus. If you're watching us on our website, click the button that says Jesus. I would love to help you take your next step with Jesus. Jesus. Now, listen, uh, you might have been dating us for a while now. We're starting to get notifications, emails, responses. A lot of people have been dating us, but they're starting to come in and get plugged in. And I'm really, really excited about it. So I'm going to ask the same thing of you. This is a church full of unique and amazing rock stars, just like yourself. And so I'm going to ask you, take that leap. Go ahead, jump in, jump into the Rise Church fam. Go ahead, click, type in the live chat, jump in or click the button. If you're watching us on our website that says jump in, I would love to uh, meet you, get connected. And I cannot wait to see all the amazing things that God is going to do through you here at Rise Church. Now listen. We have been in a giving season. It's sowing and reaping season. So because of this, uh, it's been a, a time where Rice Church has had the ability to be on the front line. Uh, God has used us to be a blessing. God has used us to open up doors of favor for other people and to be an answer of other people's prayers. So I believe that we are sowing with purpose. We are giving God the first fruits of our increase with purpose. And the same way he's using Rice Church to do those things, the same way God is using you to do those things as well. Remember, when we honor God in his house, God honors us in our house. So listen, Isaiah and Laura are teed up. They're going to talk to us about the ways that we can give. But listen, I want you, if you did not take the leap of faith and, to, and obedience last week to become a tither, I want you to do that this week. There's nothing stopping you besides your own fear. And those things are not from God. Those are from the enemy. So let me tell you, take the journey, take the trip, take the plunge, take the leap, whatever you want to call it. But let me tell you, you cannot be God given no matter how hard you try. That's what we used to say in the church I said, uh, in the church growing up back in the day. But listen, Isaiah and Laura are teed up, ready to talk to us about the ways that we can give. Isaiah and Laura, what's going on, guys? Hey, hey Rise, Rise fam. fam. We are here to talk to you about giving and just how amazing it is. We challenge you to take time to sow into all the amazing things that are happening at Rise Church. The Bible encourages us as believers to give God the first fruits of all of our increase. That's our time, our talent, and our treasure. And the ways that you can give are up on your screen right now. The Bible says that when we give to God, God will get back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We love that God loves a cheerful giver, and we love that we can be a part of what God is doing. Thank you so much for your contributions, and we appreciate everything you are doing. And we look forward to seeing you rise to your God-given potential.
Hey, thank you so much for your giving, your contributions. I cannot wait to see the amazing things that God is going to do through you here at Rise Church. Pray for us this week, but we're still in sowing and reaping season. So we're going to keep sowing seed. God gives seed to the sower. And I believe that God is also going to put more seed in your hand to be a blessing, not just for your house, your family, your marriages, but also to make an impact for his glory and the greater good. So listen, have an amazing week. I'm going to pray us out. And I cannot wait to see the amazing things that God is going to do through you. Oh, I forgot. One thing, we have a bowling event this Saturday, 1022 um, at um, uh, 242 Lanes, the Lanes of 242 in Taylor at 10 a.m. So if you're on our group messenger, Rise Church community, you should have seen the link come through, but go ahead, register. It's a free event for you guys. We are getting ready to celebrate one year old as Rise Church. So next Sunday is technically one year as the Rise Church fam. And I'm super excited to, to share some more, talk to you a little bit about our journey through that process. And we will have some exciting news then. So listen, let me tell you, let me pray for us real quick. And I cannot wait to see all the amazing things that God is going to do through you. Here we go. Father, thank you so much for your amazing love, your kindness, your patience, and, and uh, all that you've given us. Help us to be good stewards over our faith, over our finances, Lord, our time, our talent, and our treasure. We love you so much. Would you bless us in our going in and our coming out? Uh, Lord, I ask you to, to bring increase all the way around us in our family, in our communities, in our homes, in our marriages, in our jobs. And Lord, let, allow us to experience the overflow in the name of Jesus. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you all. I love you all. Have an amazing week. See you soon.